Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before I introduce today's guest, who is really a big deal, I'm putting on my anchorman voice, big, big deal. Um, I do want to plug. So look, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint at thelandgeek.com. Scott Todd is not here today. He's moving. Um, so uh, it's just going to be me. But um, I do want to mention Scott. And certainly, if you're not automating your Craigslist postings, go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Today's podcast is sponsored by Loan Geek. Automate your passive income payments. I don't know. I got I to gotta figure that out. Today's guest, she's got a big bio. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go through it. But she is a small town girl who was able to think beyond the city limits. Carrie Wilkerson from CarrieWilkerson.com is a best-selling author, an international speaker, an award-winning podcaster, and a sought-after radio guest. Featured on CNN and Fox Business News and named by Forbes as a top small business influencer, she's also consulted marketing and launch teams of Dr. John Maxwell, Zig Ziglar, Google Small Business and other influential business leaders. She was on the Entre Leadership Podcast with Dave Ramsey. But what's even cooler is Carrie's paid off six figures in debt. She's lost over 145 pounds, runs several successful businesses from home, and she has four kids, ages of elementary through college. And we were just talking for the podcast. She's like, I might, I might adopt some more and, and get a puppy. So we got to learn about Carrie Wilkerson. Carrie Wilkerson, you're the author of The Barefoot Executive. What does that mean, The Barefoot Executive? Barefoot Executive is like exactly how we are working today. So you're working today and you're on your little walking treadmill desky thing, you know, working in your own dress code in your own office. I'm over here rocking like some, a plaid hipster, a lumberjack chic look, barefoot ripped jeans, but still the CEO of my business. Nobody's going to tell me how to dress. Nobody's going to determine my pay but me. I mean, I'm very in alignment with, with what you guys are about. Barefoot executive just means life and business on your terms, making it work however that looks for you. So if you want to rock some expensive shoes, you know, the, I, I'm all about that if that makes you happy. But for me, I didn't want to have to like wear executive clothes every single day. I didn't want to have to deal with somebody else's version of a corner office. I like to choose my corner office where I am at the time with my family. So that's what the Barefoot Executive is about. I am barefoot a large percent of the time when I'm working at home. I do sometimes even speak barefoot on stage. Um, my, my audience tends to like that. But it really is about choice. It's about choice and lifestyle. Yeah, so how did you, like, let, let's, let's get your superhero story. Like, how did you, you know, kind of turn it all around? I mean, six figures in debt. Twice. Uh, twice. And, you know, being a, uh, you know, full-time mom, um, you know, clearly being, you know, a little bit unhealthy, um, like, that. yeah, like, how do you turn that around? You know, one day and one decision at a time. That's how you do it. There is no big miracle. There's no big, you don't like wake up and, and stumble onto some lotto, get out of debt card, lotto, get out of fat card. We all know the stats of the people that have won the lotto, paid off a lot of debt, and then they end up bankrupt in a very short period of time because they don't change their behaviors or their attitude about money. Um, it really is one decision at a time. My next book is called Move the Needle. And it's the tiny, almost imperceptible decisions and changes that add up to radical transformation in your business body or life. And it's about the little bitty decisions we make. The decision that you are walking at your desk, that is how you affect radical change in your life is by the little things that we don't think matter. But when we don't make those decisions, they do matter. They add up to massive debt. They add up to massive fat. They add up to massive relationship disrepair or dysfunction or addiction. Um, so that that is how you get out of all that mess. I just happen to be in a lot of messes at a time. So, um, so there's that. I mean, there's no, everybody always wants to say, what do you eat? Or what do you not eat? You know, what do you, how did you pay off all that? Well, it's a matter of decreasing your spending, increasing your income, being smart with your, 
you know, your payoff rates and putting things in the right place at the right time, but you have to change your decisions and change your behavior or you never change your patterns. Yeah. I mean, Carrie, one of, one of my favorite books is uh, The Willpower Instinct. Have you read that book? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we only have so much willpower, right? right. It's, it's like, a, like a muscle and it gets fatigued. And by the end of the day, instead of having a, a bowl of almonds, right? When you're a little hungry or eat some carrots and hummus, right? It's really easy to have a bowl of cereal and like, oh, that was easy. And not just a bowl of cereal, but like the mixing bowl of cereal. Right, right. You're like, you know what? And then after you have the mixing bowl of cereal, you're like, you know what? Ben and Jerry sounds really good. Right. And then, you know, and and then same thing with like, you go on Amazon, right? And you're kind of tired. You're fatigued, long day. You know what? I worked really hard today. I deserve that thousand dollar drone which by the way, I, I really want, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, so how do you like, you know, clearly it's, you know, these, these small little imperceptible steps, like you said, mm-hmm. but we're fatigued, we're tired, we're we all are. stressed. So, we so are. what's the first step, Carrie Wilkerson, save our lives. Yeah. So the first thing you have to do is you have to be really honest with yourself. It's what I call the naked before picture. Now, whether that's your finances or your relationships or your weight, you have to really acknowledge what it looks like right now. For me, it was a spreadsheet where I wrote down everybody I owed money to, how much I owed them, what those percentage rates were, all those kind of things. I really thought that I was about $30,000 in debt. That's how inattentive I was. I was shuffling things around. And I used to think it was only me that was that way. And now I've met tens of thousands of people that are the same way. They really have no idea. When I added it up, when I got real, when I dug it all out and started paying attention, it was six figures. And that wasn't counting my car or my house. So six figures, that's harsh. And we were not wearing brands. We were not taking luxury vacations. That was really just little bitty bad decisions adding up and then shuffling business money. You know, robbing Peter to pay Paul paying this card with this cash advance, those kind of things. So the way we do this without like beating yourself to death with decisions, much like that um, casual coffee drinker at Starbucks who, who says, uh, you know, I want the half this part that with a shot of this. And you know, they have those 18 things at Starbucks that they order. They make all those decisions. Well, no wonder they can't make good decisions about everything else. They're using up all their capabilities. You have to get the real naked picture and then you have to make some one-time decisions. What I call them one-time decisions. Your non-negotiables. Make your decisions and create your routines in advance. So if I decide I'm only gonna drink water, that shouldn't become a decision at every meal. It should be a decision I've already made. I'm gonna drink only water. So when the waitress says, what will you have to drink? "Mm, You know what sounds really good? Nope, water. I'm drinking water. I've made a decision to drink water. And I know it sounds silly and we should be stronger than that, but when you make the decision in advance, make a list, write it down, whatever it has to be, then that helps you not have to make those decisions later in the day. A good example is Zuckerberg and his wardrobe or President Obama and his wardrobe. You know, these guys are the ones that wear uniforms and it's, it's much more common than you think. I actually do wear kind of a, a work at home uniform too. I have several of the same type of pants, several of the same type of shirts, and then like a shirt vest, like this thing I'm actually wearing is actually a vest that I can throw on. So I really have very few dressing decisions I have to make. Okay, this kind of, it's like granimals, right? This kind of, this kind of top, this kind of thing over it, done. Um, I'm not exhausting myself or frustrating myself in the closet. Like, oh, I don't have anything cute to wear. Oh, I don't know what to wear today. You know what? Put on the Zuckerberg t-shirt, the Zuckerberg pants. Go use your decisions for other things. Make the predetermined decision. Meal prep. Anybody that's ever followed weight loss or fitness knows that the the rage, you know, supposedly it's a trend, is meal prep. Deciding on Saturday and Sunday what you're going to eat, partitioning it out for the week, even putting it in containers. That's so that when you're tired or rushed or having cravings, you're not having to decide what to eat. You decide to grab a container of what you already made decisions about when you were stronger. This can translate in every area. You talked about Amazon. I do, every January, I do an Amazon fast. Sometimes I do it twice a year. I do an Amazon freeze. Like I don't even open it. I don't go there. It doesn't matter what for. I just absolutely freeze it. I read everything that's on my Kindle that I haven't touched yet. I go through my bookshelves. What have I not read? 
or what to read that I just keep adding more things to, you know, I stop it so that I become more conscious. I don't have to say, do I need this book or not? Does this fit in my budget or not? Nope, because Amazon is a no for this month. I've already made that decision. And guys, this comes with practice. I'm not gonna say I was perfect when I first started. It really did start with a couple of manageable decisions, like no sugar or no water. But I didn't come in and say, no sugar, no water, exercise two hours a day, plus you know, eliminate negative people. You know, I didn't come in and sabotage myself with too much. It was a couple of decisions that I could reinforce that muscle, like you called it, that muscle every day. And then the next week I would add a couple of more pre-made decisions and then they became kind of like success routines. I, I love it. You know, what's so funny is you brought up people and I, and I really do believe we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with, mm -hmm. right? Sorry. Like I've, I've got a neighbor and great guy. I love hanging out with him, but boy, does he like his meat, right? Lots of meat, fatty meats, right? lots of alcohol and whenever we hang out i feel like i've got to eat like that right partake. there you go partake and it's like it's not healthy i feel horrible the next day right it would, it would be okay without the alcohol like fatty meat we eat a lot of fatty meat i do ketosis you know the keto diet so we do a lot of fat and a lot of protein it's the alcohol, sugars, and the wheat and the alcohol that just kind of crashes everything else. But yeah, I get it. When you're hanging out with those people, it rubs off. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, and, that, and that's the thing is like, I, I remember watching this, uh, this show, Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee. Did you ever see that show? It's no. like, it was like on Hulu. It's this jo like Jerry Seinfeld takes these comedians out. So he's out with Larry David, who's like his best friend. They did, they're co-creators of Seinfeld. And Larry David's complaining. He wants to live this healthy lifestyle and he just got divorced. And he says to Jerry, I think about this a lot because I'm kind of like this. There's like a rigidity with, with me kind of, and it, and it can hurt my relationships, but I want to get your point of view on this. He says to Jerry, he's like, I got to a point where I couldn't even have a drink of a, a hot beverage in the morning with my wife. She was drinking coffee and she was annoyed that I was drinking tea, right? And, and I'm like, well, what's the difference? We're both drinking hot beverage. And Jerry's like, I agree with her. It's like, we go to the ice cream store together, right? I get an ice cream and you order a salad. You ruin the mood, right? And so Carrie, how can we live this healthy lifestyle without ruining the mood? You know, part of that is, is we got to get over it unless they're buying my fat pants or unless they're paying my insurance premiums, I cannot continue to make the fatter people in my life happy by eating according to what makes them comfortable. There's that. But I will say, now being a mom, having a lot of kids, we went out the other day and the kids really wanted ice cream. Well, I don't eat ice cream. So there you go. I don't eat ice cream. So um, I said, well, you guys pick. You know, it doesn't matter to me since I don't eat it anyway. And now the kids are kind of used to it, but my husband, it really bothers him. So he said, well, let's go to, I forget the name of it, some simple frog, tree frog. It's one of those Froyo places. He said, let's go there because they have dairy-free sorbet, and then you can have that. So to him, he's happier if I have two tablespoons of dairy-free sorbet because then I'm sitting in the circle with a spoon with them. So you're right, there is that. So I think you have to decide which of those relationships it's important for you to partake, when it's okay for you to not partake, what mood you're willing to ruin. But we've gotta quit forsaking our disciplines and what's important to us to make other people more comfortable. Why are they more worried about making me more comfortable? How about we go to a salad bar instead of the ice cream bar to celebrate? Or how about we go to a sorbet place or a, you know, get a, go, go get a, um, you know, some bottled water. I mean, you know, part of it is because of our conditioning, how we've all decided to celebrate. What TV says is how we celebrate, what we've been brought up. And sometimes I think it's just a matter of changing the conversation. Um, my kids for a while fussed because I didn't partake in Saturday morning donuts with them. I wish they would all just stop it. I don't even like it in the house. I don't like it in their bodies. I don't think it's healthy, but I'm not the mom that's going to like come down like a hammer on them. Okay, if you guys want to do that on Saturday morning, that's fine. But you got to know that if I'm going to sit there, I'm going to drink a shake 
or I'm going to have my eggs, or I'm just going to sit there with my coffee because I am a coffee drinker. So they're a little more used to it, but sometimes my husband really does, you know, want us all to be doing the same thing. I think you got to pick your battles, but you know, if I'm hanging out with my friends who are all smokers and I'm not a smoker anymore, do I have a cigarette to make them happy? If I'm an alcoholic and we're all watching the game and my friends all break out a six pack, does it mean I have to give up on my sobriety in order to make them happy? Or is it better for me to remove myself from the conversation or the situation? So I think you've really got to weigh those individually. Yeah, sometimes, absolutely. Sometimes it's just a cop out. It allows us to quit. Sometimes yeah. We cut ourselves too much slack. And sometimes it's a lack of imagination. If you know that this friend, right, and you're going to feel this way with this friend, and you still like that relationship, go on a hike together and just hang out. You yeah. don't have to do what they want to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I can always hike with my buddy, my neighbor, yeah. instead of having this massive, you know, gorge, gorge fest. And, <laughs> you know, like, like, let's just do this. And then, you know, after that, like maybe I, I it, it, but you know what I mean? So, but it's really interesting. Now let's, let's circle back to business, right? Okay. Because these imperceptible little things in business, like in our business, there's two things that really, and I love your, I love the, the, the title of your book, Move the Needle. There's two things that move the needle in our business. Okay. Mailing and marketing. Everything else is kind of playing business. If you're not doing those two things, you're not really in business, right? So now, what were the, two, what were like the little things that you would do that would move the needle in your business? You know, we're, we're all experts at the tiny imperceptible things that keep us busy. <laughs> you know, cleaning off our desk, framing things, you know, social media, all those things. I think the same concept for what moves the needle in your business, which is marketing and mailing, are the same things in every business because it's prospecting and making offers. It's prospecting and making offers. And no matter what business you're in, whether you're in direct sales and you're selling lipstick or whether you're selling real estate, or whether you're selling money as in loans, or you know whether you're selling yourself like I do as a keynote speaker and leadership and development trainer, it's a matter of making offers and putting yourself out there. And the reason there's so much resistance to that is because there could be a no involved. There could be a no involved. I talk to a lot of single people that have been single a long time and they're frustrated they can't meet people or that they're not dating. Well, are you asking people out? Are you making offers? Are you, are you getting yourself out there? Are you marketing? It's the same thing in relationships. It's the same thing. You, in order to get results, you have to have some risk. And sometimes the risk is just the no. Yeah. I, I've got a new book. I think for you, this after move the needle, it's going to be called life is a numbers game. Life is numbers. <laughs> it's all, it's all a numbers game, right? Our business is a numbers game. And, it, and the beautiful thing about it is there's a direct correlation between yeah. effort and results. Not every business is like that, but if you find the right business, it's like that. It's really nice to have that total control. And we're so afraid of no. And the fact is all the yeses are in between the no's. Yeah, yeah it really, yeah, it really is. What, what do you think other people are, are afraid of besides no? Uh, what people will say about them, people's opinion of them. We're stuck in perpetual junior high right now because of social media because everybody is watching. Oh, y'all can't see me doing air quotes. He can see me doing air quotes, but everybody's watching. Um, I have a preteen and there is a phenomenon that happens when they hit pre-teenagerhood. So if you guys don't have preteens, just listen for a second. You'll remember when you hit seventh and eighth grade. So we've got this nine-year-old who could care less what anybody thinks of her. She could care less if somebody likes her outfit. Now she likes it when I like it, but she could care less what her friends think. She is her own human. She is rocking it. My 12 year old used to be that way. And then we hit junior high and all of a sudden, mom, lower your voice. They, they can hear you. Mom, drop me off over here. So nobody will see mom. I can't wear that. Nobody wears that. So all of a sudden we hit this phase of the invisible audience. Everybody's watching. Everybody's listening. Everybody's criticizing. Everybody's judging. Well, we used to outgrow it, you know, right around late high school or early college. We used to outgrow that and get kind of back into that. I'm going to be my own person thing. But now with social media, we're still convinced everybody's watching, everybody's listening, and they are on social media, and they're very quick to offer their opinion. 
they're very quick to criticize. Keyboard trolls are huge at, wow, you know, nice hair or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so we have not, we have not grown past that now. We're right back in junior high that we care what people think or we care if people laugh or we care if we're doing something different. And what if they think I'm a failure or what if they think I'm stupid or what if they disagree with my choice? We've got to get to a point of, I don't care unless you're paying my bills because you're a client or you're paying my guilt, my bills because you're a partner. Um, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to serve who I'm going to serve. I'm going to live out loud my own way, whatever that happens to look like. And the invisible audience, their full-time job is being critical and trying to keep everybody down with them. And they don't even know it necessarily. They don't recognize that in themselves. They think they're trying to help. They think they're being helpful. But really, it's like Toy Story. You remember the first Toy Story? There's this great scene of the claw machine and Buzz is trying to get out. The claw is pulling him out. It's like the arcade game. The, he's trying to pull out and all the little aliens are pulling him back in. It's safer in here. Stay in here with us. Our friends, our well-meaning family, our church members, our neighbors, they're doing the same thing. It's the crabs in the bucket. They're trying to keep us there with them because it's safest there. That's what we know. So we have to get to a point where we're not fearful of what people think. We're not fearful of failure. We're not feel, I mean, we're going to fail because just like all the yeses are buried in between the no's, all the success comes with the failures. No, it's, it's so true. I mean, if you're, if actually, you know, it's the, it's, I think business is like skiing. If you're not falling, you're not skiing hard enough, right? right? If you're not failing in business, like daily trying something new, putting yourself out there, embracing the suck, being, you know, comfortable, being uncomfortable, yep. and growing and stretching. Like that's where, that's where the, 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 the growth and the, and, and the, the real, you know, value of what you're doing comes out. I, yeah. I agree with you hundred percent, Yeah, but it, it is scary. I mean, I, I look back at some of the, the, the early videos I did when I first started Land Geek and they're so cringeworthy. I can't even yeah. watch them. Oh, yeah. And, but I keep them up there to remind me, right? Like, well, look, and that's a good example for everybody else too, right? All my fat videos, all my fat pictures, I want to take all those down. I really would love to go take all those down, but some of them have still good information. Um, but also they're proof, <laughs> they're proof of where I've, I've been and how I've yo-yoed and, and all those things. And a lot of people will look at us or listen to us and go, well, that's easy for you to say because you're there. It's easy for you to say because you're on the other side. It's easy for you to say because you're this or that or the other. And the fact is, it's not that we're fearless. It's that we act in the face of fear. Um, one of the things I say a lot is you can be scared and broke or you can be afraid and well paid. And if we're going to be scared anyway, we might as well be getting paid for it. Yeah. So what are some of the ways that we can get paid? Like... Like, you know, if I, you know what I mean? Like, like, what, what do you, what do you recommend? Like, yeah, what's, what's well, you get paid. Do that? Yeah, it depends. It depends on, you know, what you're, what you're looking for. And I really do as a personal growth person, I really think this just depends on where you are in your life right now. I think we're looking at relationships. We're looking at health goals. We're looking at parenting. We're looking at our own education, our spirituality and our businesses. So some of the ways we get paid are results. No matter which of those areas you're looking for, the pay is in the results, whether that's because you're stronger now or your size is smaller now or you're more confident to market yourself now. One of the biggest paydays is when you're exercising a discipline like we talked about earlier in one area of your life, it tends to bleed into the other areas of your life. It makes you bolder, more assured in your other decisions. Even if you're working on fitness, it will bleed into business. It will bleed into relationships. So some of the ways you're paid are results. So in your business, when you're mailing or when you're marketing, you get paid with results. And I would say you're even paid for the no's because a no at least helps you move on. A no helps you know either, you know, wrong offer, wrong postcard, wrong, wrong area, wrong timing, wrong whatever. It helps you know what to tweak, what to massage, or where to go with better. Same when you're dating. You know, um, I always said that I dated a lot. I did not date exclusively much. I dated a lot. I figured the more boys I dated, 
the more I knew what was non-negotiable as a yes and non-negotiable as a no in the character traits I was looking for. Sure enough, I made a list of, you know what, must have this, must not have this, cannot deal with this, blah, blah, blah. The day I met my husband, and that there's no lie, you can talk to my mama, guys. The day I met my husband, I called my mom and I said, I found him. She said, you found who? And I said, the guy I'm going to marry. She said, you just met him today? I said, yes, I absolutely didn't. I know it's him because I am not yet physically attracted to him, but he meets every criteria on that list that I carry around. She was like, oh, well, okay then. Sure enough, my parents met him a couple months later. And I said, don't tell dad or he'll never like him. My dad met him a couple months later on campus. My dad said to my mom, that's the guy Carrie's going to marry. Mom said, how do you know that? He said, because he matches every criteria on the list I've been carrying around. But don't tell Carrie or she'll never go out with him. <laughs> that, that is an incredible story. And, you know, 25 I'm, Carrie, years later, here we are, 25. I, I'm, on, I'm coming on 20, and I, I, I have a very similar story. I shook my wife's hand. I was set up with her. Shook her hand. I was dating someone at the time. Oh, no. called, my, called my parents, said, I found the girl I'm going to marry. Called the girl I was dating, said, let's just be friends. And, and the rest is history. Yeah, and we were just friends for a while, but I just knew. I just had this knowing. He, was, he dated a couple of other people, and I was just very patient with it because I knew that they were going to pass and we were going to you know, hit it off. And sure enough, when we knew, we knew. So, um, so I would say you know, that it's important to know what's – what's non-negotiable, what is, and all the no's help you build up to the yeses, whether it's relationships, whether it's business. So some of the ways you get paid are in results, in relationships, and also in, in cash, I mean, and in freedom. And paycheck isn't your only measure, but lifestyle. I mean, you're working at home, I'm working at home. Um, you know, I had late coffee with my husband this morning. We had a great family business meeting. We set some 100-day goals as a family this morning. Um, we're working on the puppy plan. That's the end of the 100 days. One of the kids is working for that. So we created three habits each that we're working on for the next 100 days. As a family, we're all cheering for each other. You know, if we had all been up at dawn and having to rush to go to offices and go to different places and drop people up here or have somebody tag team to take care of them there. You know, freedom is a huge paycheck. Lifestyle is a huge paycheck. We're not rolling in money. We still have to make choices, yes and no, about some things. Part of that's because I have a special needs son whose expenses are really high, but that's also a paycheck. The fact that I get to afford this amazing opportunity for my 21 year old son who will never be independent. So um, paychecks aren't always in wealth and house and those kind of things but i like to say success is in the eye of the beholder and you and your family get to decide what your payday needs to look like whether it's money whether it's freedom whether it's lifestyle whether it's schedule whether it's time together or experiences or how that looks for you yeah no it's it's i, I couldn't agree more i mean i every day i have a i write down in my gratitude journal and uh almost inevitably it's my freedom it's my flexibility um, and I, I'm just so blessed and so thankful that since 2001, I've, I haven't had to fight traffic. I haven't had, a, you know, to be micromanaged or a boss yep. or, um, you know, having to call HR and say, can I take this day off? Right. Or, or substitute plans. Like when I taught school, it was easier to go to school sick than to deal with substitute plans and what you have to do in order to jump through those hoops. And so, uh, you know, we celebrated Boss's Day recently. And so I just, I celebrated with myself. I'm like, woohoo, good job, 19 years. Good on ya. I, I, I would never have worked for anybody else for 19 years. I don't have the temperament for it. But because I'm growing and changing and my business is evolving, I'm a new boss like every day. It's awesome. I rock. I'm the best boss and also the, the worst boss that I've ever had. Yeah, no, my, my friends always, you know, make fun of me. Like, your, your boss is a jerk. Right. <laughs> some days. Some some days. Yeah, because yeah, some, some days I can't go to lunch, right? I'm like, no, I'm, I, you know, I've got a call. Yep. I've got a mastermind. They're like, oh, your boss is the worst. That's right. The worst and the best simultaneously. And the best. Mm -hmm. All right, Kerry, Kerry Wilkerson. We're at that point now in the podcast where I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. That's my and favorite. I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Now, don't take mine, which is going to be the barefoot executive and carrywilkerson.com. Okay, anything else? 
Yeah, go get on the email list so you'll know when Move the Needle comes out. It's also going to be what I call an airplane read, something small enough, like 15,000 words, something they can knock out instead of like a business book that you have to set aside two weeks for. It's going to be, my leadership series is going to be small, easy reads. So um, I would say, uh, you know, and I say this on almost every podcast, Mike McCallowitz, and I think I'm pronouncing that correct. You are. Um, I, I've had him on the podcast. Have you? He's a friend of mine. Uh, we've never met in person. Well, no, we have. We met in person back when I was the barefoot executive and he was the toilet paper entrepreneur. And he wanted me to do a testimonial for that way back when. But now he's kind of a big deal and speaks internationally. But guys, his profit first book will change everything if you read it and get that naked before picture of how you're really handling your finances. We are the worst embezzlers on the planet. We are the worst money managers. We are, because we're CEO, CMO, CFO, and all those things, we tend to neglect that money part and we tend to pay ourselves last or we extravagantly pay ourselves first. You know, we have both ends of the spectrum. Profit first um, is a great non-snoozy way to look at how you're handling your money. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a numbers person, except that I love numbers in how I get to control my life. But um, I'm not a math person. And some parts of the book, I did go into screensaver mode and circle that part and just hand it off to my husband, who's an accountant, um, or email my, my accountant about it. Um, but there are some parts that you just go, oh, dang, how does he know? Is he reading my mail? Is he looking at my checkbook register or the lack thereof? So profit first, and it's got a pig on the cover. You guys will recognize it. I do recommend the paper copy and not the Kindle copy because I think you should make notes in it. I think you should highlight it. I think you should sticky note the heck out of it. It will make the biggest difference in you being real with yourself and your shareholders. Those are the people that live with you that depend on you or that you depend on. And I think that that could be the biggest game changer on whether you're playing or whether you're performing, on whether you're willing or whether you're wishing. Um, I think that profit first is a really great game changer for that. I know you give them all kinds of marketing advice, all kinds of go change the front end. But guys, if your back end is leaky or, or non-effective and you're not seeing how the front end can really change things and really move the needle in big ways, I think profit first is a powerful tip of the week. It's great. It, I almost feel like you're like my female doppelganger. There you go. You're welcome. I do the profit first system and yeah. I talk about it. And my CPA is actually profit first certified. Like he's been through the, the McAllitz program. And yeah. Um, yeah. And it, yeah. Pumpkin plan was great. Pumpkin plan was great. But you know what? I, um, I think Profit First is my favorite that he's done. So don't y'all don't go stock up on all his books. Stop it. That's a delay to real action. Get Profit First only, highlight, sticky note, and take action on it. Don't just say, oh, I need to do something different. Do the something different. That's what will set you apart. Yeah, I did I did my profit distribution October 1st, because that's, you know, the quarter the quarter the quarter. And and it's really helped my relationship with my wife. Because, you know, we used to have that argument like, oh, you're hoarding, you're hoarding money in your business, right? And I'm like, yeah, I guess maybe I am. Because, you know, like, I, I want to keep, I want to keep investing. But now, you know, it's just an automated thing. Here's our distribution. Let's live life. Let's enjoy, right? Let's go get the Barefoot Executive. There you go. Let's, let's go meet the Barefoot Executive and crew in Cabo. That could be a fun profit distribution. Is, are you going to Cabo? You having a, a, a leadership retreat? We're, we're actually going to Hawaii in June. We're um, uh, taking the whole entire family, like all the kids and even some friends. We're all going to Hawaii this summer. So meet us in Hawaii. That'd be super fun. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. That's a fun uh, profit distribution. And guys, here's the tip about that. If your family is not supportive or if they resent your business, or if you have people that don't understand your business, you start letting them in on the profit distribution and really speak it. Like this is because of the business. This is profit distribution time. They will never be unsupportive of your business again. You'd be like, you remember that Disney World trip? You remember that? That was profit distribution quarter. That's because sometimes I have to be in calls instead of at the pool with you. You know, 
so, so there are ways to make it work and not have your family, you know, resent it. Also, if you're looking at how do you transition out of full-time income into all of your own income, if this is a side hustle for you, that will help you see how to make those numbers grow instead of always just dissipating magically. Like, where's the money? I know I had some great clients this month. What happened to that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, you know, if you really want to talk about what this podcast is all about, it's about living in reality. Yes. It's about really being aware and just living in total reality of where you're at and yeah. where you want to be. And, and, and don't, you know, don't have this magical thinking. If you're in debt, like you're in debt and you've got to deal with it. If you're living an unhealthy lifestyle, you're living an unhealthy lifestyle. You've got to deal with it and make these small little changes that can actually have a huge impact. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to moving the needle. Like I'm, I'm after this podcast, I'm like, I'm like, Harry, where, when, when can I get a, where is it? Where is it? When can I get the review copy? Send it, yeah. send it. Send it, you know, one of the things I tell people all the time is truthfully, most people are functioning one crisis away from a Kickstarter campaign. You know, we see those Kickstarter campaigns and we say, oh, that's tragic that they can't afford their medical bills or, oh, that's horrible that they couldn't afford to bury so-and-so. And the fact is the majority of us are handling our money that exact same way. We are maxed out on what we can pay on things. We're so dependent on an employer. Um, and, and all it takes, my college kid could tell you, all it takes is one car repair bill to put you in a world of hurt. She had $400 worth of work done on her car and she is freaking all kinds of out. And it's because she did not set aside the monthly savings in her car account that we've been telling her since she started driving. It's her first major car repair. And boy, has she learned her lesson because guess who's not paying for it? Mom. Mom is not paying for it. That's your car. You own it. You bought it. With the understanding you're also responsible for this, you're supposed to be setting aside 5% a month of all your income into a car repair account, and you have not. You have not done it, so you have some repercussions. So all the rest of us are one crisis away from a Kickstarter campaign. I would hate to have to do a Kickstarter campaign and have people bail me out of a crisis when I know that I can create that income on my own. But then because of lack of planning or lack of self-awareness or lack of discipline, I didn't do it, but I had the tools. Eeks, you know, that, that puts a different kind of fright in me. So I'm determined to distance myself between Kickstarter campaign necessity. No, it's, 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 it's great. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. So my tip of the week is going to be learn more about Carrie Wilkerson. Go to CarrieWilkerson.com. Um, get the Barefoot Executive. Get on the list for move the needle. I love that title. And um, Carrie, are we good? We're good. Um, keep your eye out. Entrepreneur Magazine just sent a video crew out last week. So we're going to be on the Entrepreneur Magazine homepage soon. And also, uh, one more thing I was, oh, also at CarrieWilkerson.com, there's a seven day free video series, two to four minutes a day, just kind of a shot in the arm on how to work smarter, not harder, free, 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 absolutely free. No pitch on that not selling anything there. So go sign up for that and you get a little shot of motivation if you can stand to have my voice in your head. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Well, I, I thought this was great. And um, I want to thank you for being on the podcast. And the only way that we could get a quality guest like Carrie Wilkerson to come on the Art of Passive Income Model podcast is because she looked at the reviews. She looked at the ratings and she said, okay, you know, I could go on Forbes or CNN or Fox this morning, but you know what? Art of Passive Income there you go. Is, is really going to be the podcast that I should go on. And it's because of you, the listener, take 20 seconds out of your day, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It really, really helps. Otherwise, Carrie would have looked at our podcast and be like, no, I'll, yeah. you know what? I'll go on the Entre Leadership Podcast again yeah, with, Dave, there you go. With, with Dave Ramsey. Right. And also, you guys share it with a friend. Like, if you find these things valuable, if you find these interviews valuable, go post it on your Facebook page. Go post it on your Twitter feed. Go post about it on Instagram or go email a handful of friends. If, if you're the sum of the people that you're hanging out with, then they're the sum of you too. So are you adding to their life or are you remaining neutral and hoarding all the transformation and good information to yourself? Don't be a hoarder. Be a sharer. I love it. I love it. Well, Carrie Wilkerson, I could talk to you for hours, um, being my female doppelganger. We have so much in common. But I want to thank you for being on the podcast. I want to thank all the listeners. And um, again, go to thelandgeek.com, learn more, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Flight School is here. You can always register for the free web class on that. I'm very excited. And uh, 
again, go to kerrywilkerson.com. We'll see everybody next time. Let freedom ring.